trail. There's not one maintained bathroom, not one official campsite. So these are all recreation opportunities that that could be uh, that could be explored. Um, I will say that the fact that not many people go out there is probably a draw for a lot of the people who like it a lot. So maybe there should be a, maybe like a designated area for that sort of intensive use or something. I don't know, but that's that's a good idea. Yeah, and that's something that people can definitely advocate for. Yeah, in the back. Awesome question. Okay, the question is um, due to the things we talked about tonight, um, the endangered species and the uh, significance of the, the school fund and, and all that, is, is there a legislative way to move this land out of timber production into protection? Is that fair? Um, so that, uh, that is in the works uh, partially. Um, there is a there's a program in, in many states. There's one in Washington. Um, turns out that the conflicts of like using resources versus saving them are nothing new, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel here to solve this problem, um, at least in part. In Washington state, they have this program called the Trust Lands Transfer Program, and they've used that program to transfer out of production ecologically sensitive lands, usually in exchange for other, um, other productive lands or cash. Um, and that program, you know, has, I think it's like 10,000 acres, it's, it's transferred over time. It's not, it wouldn't be something that would immediately solve the problem, but it would be something that could help in the short term to get some money back into the fund, to uh, make it not such an immediate issue. Um, and there is legislation being introduced, I think it has been introduced technically, but it's still being worked on in this session. It was introduced by Arnie Roblin. Um, in Coos Bay. He's out of Coos Bay, but he's a senator for most of the coast. Um, and that is a great thing to talk to legislators about. When I talked, I went to Arnie's Town Hall a couple weeks ago in Coos Bay and talked with him afterwards. And he said, because well, this was tried last, last year, this trust land transfer bill. I said, Arnie, what happened last time? Like, what can we do to make it work this time? You know, and, and he said, last time the timber industry decided they didn't like it and they, they got it squashed. You know, and uh, it's kind of frustrating because I was talking to somebody else who was familiar with that try, and I said, you know, why didn't it work out last time? And and he said, he said because Caddy McEwen decided she didn't like it, she got it squashed. <laughs> Who's our house rep on the coast? So I don't know if those are the same force or not, but it sure seems like it sometimes. So that's a great thing to talk to your legislators about because they might be able to help out in that process of getting that 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 bill through. The question is why sell the Elliot if it's providing ongoing revenue? And if you look at the forest over time, over the ownership, you know, since the state has had it, yeah, it's like four hundred million dollars in the in the green. But in the last four years, it's you know, like they lost three million dollars three years ago, and then last year they lost like a hundred thousand. This year I think that they're actually gonna be about zero again. And um so if you look at it, and, and it seems like the, the when I've looked at it, it's their graphs that they're that the state is putting out is like it starts like six years ago. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like well, it's not that's not the whole picture, you know, <laughs> like so. Um, so um, I think it's because they feel like their backs against the wall and they don't know what to do. Short-sighted. Maybe yeah, short-sighted. I it's a great question. I think in the in the long run, the forest has proved to be a valuable investment. But in the short term, I'm not sure that they believe that they can, they being the Department of State Lands or Land Board or whoever's making the decisions, uh, doesn't seem to believe that they can find a way forward without selling it. So um, the comment was about the state forestry practices rules and the difference between federal and state regulations. And Oregon has some of the weakest forestry um, guidance and laws in the nation. and um, certainly on the west coast and um, the fact that um, 
that these things are the we, we can see the direct impacts of aerial herbicide spraying and siltation and uh, deforestation and we can see the direct impacts of that and like maybe we'll say to ourselves that's bad but the truth uh, today is that that's legal there's no legal action that a private citizen can take against those practices because they're completely within the bounds of Oregon's Forest Practices Act so um, there's some very important being wor work being done to amend the Oregon Forest Practices Act, and that those are, I don't know as much about that because I don't work on that um, personally, but uh, those are really great things to, to be supportive of and advocate for. I'm gonna, uh, to bring, bring a friend and colleague up here real quick, um, I'm gonna be up here after we get done tonight, so any other questions, I'm more than happy to talk to people about, but as you can tell, I'm getting a little hoarse, and. I, <laughs> been standing here for a while so um, thank you so I love the Elliott State Forest I think it's a wonderful place and I'm so glad that you all are interested and care about it and I hope that we can go out there sometime together and um, I look forward to working with you on this um, okay so I'm going to introduce Robin Meacher who um, works at Cascadia Wildlands um, she is a staff lawyer also a conservation director or you change your title but um, <laughs> And, and she's going to talk about the lobbying day, so please uh, stick around. Hi, everyone. I'm going to try and be really brief. Um, like Max said, my name is Robin Mitra. I work with Cascadia Wildlands. We are a local Eugene nonprofit, um, and we've been involved in the Elliott for quite a while. And I want to just reiterate if you have the means and the willingness to donate to Coast Range Forest Watch, please do. We use their work constantly and it has been integral to saving many parts of the Elliott. Um, so I just wanna reiterate that for all of you. Um, and now talk about a couple opportunities um, and how to get involved uh, in the next, <laughs> uh, in the next couple months or so as we go through with the state in this process of attempting to sell off the Elliott State Forest. So like was mentioned earlier, there is a land board meeting on December 14th, sorry, February 14th, um, which may or may not have the Elliott on the agenda. That meeting does offer a opportunity for public comment, however. Um, so it is a chance for folks if they feel like coming up to come and share their thoughts if they either missed the previous land board meetings. Um, and we're also asking if people have thoughts on um, kind of what we've said with these legislative options and providing more time for conservation groups to work. We're gonna need work within the legislature and it's not gonna be figured out by December 14th um, all the way through. So it, February, sorry, thank you. That was the last thing. <laughs> um, so it would be great if people came and shared um, their comments on that. So getting to the lobby day, which is this flyer up here, um, on February 23rd, which will be after the land board meeting, there will be a great gathering um, in Salem put on by these groups on the bottom, so I'm not gonna read their names, um, which will provide lobbying training as well as an overview on how to lobby for the Elliott. So it'll take place from nine in the morning until about four in the afternoon. And we'll have a program in the beginning that goes over um, effective tools for lobbying. And this will be face-to-face -face lobbying that we're talking about. Um, we'll be setting up meetings with your legislators um, for you to meet. So we'll go over lobbying techniques and then we'll go over lobbying techniques specifically for the Elliott and how to make asks if you're uncomfortable doing it, if you want help in any way will be there to offer that and then we'll stay in the room um, to s provide support as well. And if you RSVP in advance, which we highly recommend you do because we are quickly filling up space for the room that we have um, reserved in Salem and also just our staff capacity, <laughs> which is great. We have a lot of email address on here, which is in Audubon, Portland email you can also go to our website which is cask c a s c wild.org to our elliot page and it will have information on the lobby day as well and it will be updated when we get more information on there um, but i want to just reiterate 
do not be afraid if you have no lobbying experience. If it has seemed scary in the past or whatever, we're there to provide whatever support we can and to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to talk to your legislators and for once for us to kind of sit back and be quiet in a way. Um, so we want it to be mainly for you. And outside of that, we are asking, um, the Elliott has been for quite a while, kind of goes through the news cycle and goes up and down and up and down. And we want to keep it as much in the front of people's minds as possible. So if you feel like writing to your newspaper, um, whatever that may be, that would be great. Letters to the editor are fantastic comments um, on articles that come through that have any relation to the Elliott are great as well. So we just want to encourage people to keep an eye out in the media and if they can generate their own regarding the Elliott as well. So that is what we have in that respect and um, if people have questions on how to get involved in these, you're welcome to contact me. Wait. Um, this is an opportunity for you to educate your legislator on this issue because it's very likely that they have heard of the Elliott but they don't know many of the points. And one thing I want to add really quick too is the land board members are going to be making this decision. It may not be in February, um, but they do have a very integral role to play. And as Max mentioned earlier, the land board that we have now was not the land board that made this decision to sell um, in the past. And so we want to ask people to once again get the land board to know the story. Um, so contacting them as well is still very important. They cannot hear enough from us. Um, so contacting the land board directly, their contact information is on our website as well. Right, so the land board basically will make the decision whether to go with the privatization um, proposal that has been in front of them right now or whether to give time to pursue um, this plan B or whatever plan B comes to them. The legislature will be integrally important to the bonding money that the governor has given her support for, she can't do that alone. It has to be approved and put through the legislature. As well as any sort of legislative, possible legislative fix, the trust land transfer bill that Max um, talked about, that's gonna need to go through this legislature as well. And there may be other things that come up that'll be important to solving this issue and keeping the Elliott public and conserved for the values that we want it to be conserved for um, that would require the legislature. So with that, I am going to I guess turn it back over to Max if there's more questions. And thank you all. Thanks, Robin. So um, I think I'd, I'd kind of like to um, just take questions up in the front uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. And uh, unless there's, do we need to do anything else? Do you have any other announcements? Thank or? you to you. Thank you thank to you. you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for coming. And uh, please come talk to me.